Long gone are the days of wrestling with road maps, searching desperately for certain road signs and sheepishly swallowing your pride to ask locals for directions. Today, in the modern world of technology and convenience, you rely on a GPS to get you where you need to be. You trust its directions to lead you through the foreign territory to your ultimate destination and back home promptly. It tells you to go left, you go left. It tells you to go right, you go right. It tells you to exit the With highway the of taking the wrong it. turn and prolonging your journey prevents you from defying the advice, regardless of what your intuition tells you. But you still question it sometimes. Like now. Your destination is just as irrelevant as who you're meeting or why you're going there. All that matters is that, without your GPS, you would have no idea where you were. You've been now driving for a couple hours now, but you're only covered a fraction of the total distance. As the sun begins to fall, you watch the scenery pass with skepticism. You don't know much about where you're going, but it certainly isn't suburban. Regardless, the population seems to be drastically thinning with each passing mile. Turn right. Drive straight for three miles. Take another right. Skepticism slowly blooms into nervousness as a cow town gives way to a full-fledged forest. Night has fallen. You knew you wouldn't reach your destination until early morning hours, but that hasn't troubled you. You expected an endless highway, the path ahead marked brightly with spattering streetlights and taillights. Reality brought none of that. Even the gentle moonlight that had set a softer impact of the towns you passed has been completely blocked by the withered leaves dangling from the interlocking trees cover above. Their darkness is stiffening, growing an almost menacing edge as you follow the gently twisting, unlit road further into the brush. The windows are closed and the heat is blasting, but goosebumps still prickle across your arms in an effort to fight an ex explicable chill. Even the comforting familiarity of the shitty pop songs playing on the radio doesn't dampen the fear setting in the pit of your stomach. Just keep going straight for 11 miles, your GPS says. Then you'll be turning onto an East Ward Board Highway. Then everything will be okay, right? Judging by your white knuckle grip of the steering wheel, you aren't very convinced of that. You're considering turning back, strongly considering it. But that would require stopping. And while it feels like a million eyes are glaring daggers at you from the brush, you like to think you're safe while you're moving. Your headlights slice through the darkness blanketing this road ahead. Believe everything else stamped in unpenetrable blackness. Even with your high beams on, visibility of anything beyond the immediate is minimal. With four miles to go, you are pushing your car into each turn with nerve-wracking speed. But somehow your fear of crashing seems to be less important than your need to get out. Then your GPS goes black. The sudden darkness is jarring. Your eyes fly to the vice, nearly hoping that it just lost signal. Why would it go black? Or was it turned off? But by whom? Or it, it just needed to be plugged in. Who unplugged it? Or you tear your eyes from the machine long enough to catch a shock. A blonde hair. A boyish face stretched by surprise and wide, clear blue eyes. It lasts only a second. Then your frame, your car, your world is shaking by a sickening thump. You slam on the brakes and reflex, tires screaming to stop. This is where it gets dangerous. This is where you have a choice. On one hand, you can choose to disregard the lessons that every horror movie has taught you, swallow your fears, rooted in the darkness, thriving all around you, and ignore the voice in your head screaming at you to get the fuck out of there and open your car door. On the other hand, you could take the other option, offered by the crucial moment. You can listen to that voice in your head, put your fear for your own life, for the one that you may have inadvertently ended, Heed the words that you've screamed at numerous television screams in the past and don't fucking go there. You gather up all the courage you can and mustard and take option one. 
As you step from the preceded safety of your vehicle, you feel an inexplicable calm wash over you. With each step you take from the driver's seat to the back of the car, you feel the knots of uneasiness firmly tied in your stomach. By the time you peer beyond the truck of your car, any malice you thought felt is completely gone, replaced with the gentle tranquility of a mid-fall night. When you were greeted by the sight of an empty road, you left quietly to yourself. It must have been a bump in the road, you decide, and your paranoid mind just conquered the imaginary boy as a reason for it. What would a boy even be doing in the woods alone at this hour? You marvel at how silly you've been acting as you sit back in your car, noting with relief that your GPS is happily displaying your route again and shifting into drive and continuing the journey. The darkness of the woods had lost its menacing edge. Instead, there's just a, the comfortable ambience of a thrilling forest wildlife calling into the night. You find your way out of the forest and onto the highway without complaint. You move at an unhurried pace, but you cover the distance much faster than you would expect. You arrive at your destination sooner than anyone, including yourself, thought possible. When you try to return home, your GPS routes an entirely different course that takes hours longer, but it insists that it is the fastest. Even when you try to consult a map, you still cannot figure out how you got there so quickly. The event will be a bit of a mystery, but not worth the energy that would be spent by continuing to wonder about it. But what happens if you take the second option? You prepare to find out when, instead of opening the door. You speed away from the scene, heart hammering in your chest because holy hell what just happened. When you glance into your rearview mirror and see a pair of clear blue eyes staring back at you, you begin to realize that perhaps you've made a horrible mistake, or maybe that you should have fled without a second hesitation. Because seriously, what the hell was that? Your breath is coming in labored puffs as you begin to hyperventilate. The radio cuts off and the genetic love song that was playing was replaced by a deafening silence. Tears are prickling at your eyes because what the hell when your GPS blinks back to life. You release a sobbing cry of relief, thanking every identity you can think of. Oh Christ. Left turn to the end in three miles. The tinny, halting voice of the GPS cut through your hope that this was over. You grab the machine, praying with all your heart that you heard it wrong. But no. There it is. Bland print firmly displayed on the screen. Your stomach drops like a stone. You want to turn around, you, you really do, but, but then you would definitely run into whatever that was again. You watch the tree line for an opening big enough for your car, but it's just too dense. Even if you got past the outer ring, the forest would definitely be too thick within. Driving straight ahead is your only option, and you hate it. Left turn and to the end in two miles. Tears are rolling down your cheeks, unhabited by gasping sobs, rack your frame. Your radio cracks back to life, releasing a torrent of whispering voices from their speakers. Among the nondescript voices, the loudest is that of a young boy. You can hear tears in his voice, but he's laughing. It's wobbly and feeble, but grows in strength as you continue forward. Left turn to the end in one mile, you start seeing him. You barely catch a glimpse of him each time, nearly hitting him under the brush as he is. Every couple of seconds, you frantically darn your eyes will fall upon his clear blue ones as he watches you from the trees. It's the boy you hit. The first time you spotted him, he just stared at you, completely emotionless and ordinary. You know you stopped breathing, but you've forgotten how to start again. Each time you see him, he's a step closer to the road, and his face is slowly comforting into a maniac ring. Bile rises in your throat, forcing your lungs back to work with a gagging cough of exhale. The laughter from your speakers is deafening. He's in the road now. He just stands there, peering closer to the middle each time. You don't have to swerve to avoid him yet. But you feel like that won't last long. Left turn to the end in 0.1 mile. Your headlights go out. You almost feel relieved. You won't have to see those eyes anymore. 
On reflex, your foot jams on the brakes, only to find them useless. When the accelerator compresses itself fully, you start laughing. This, this is the end, isn't it? it? Took long enough to get here. But then you remember that you don't want to die. With each wispy chuckle comes a gasping sob, as a dim lightning offered by your car's position lights reveals a tree in your path. That brief moment of acceptance resolves into defiance. You snap the wheel hard to the left, pulling your car into a diagonal skid. Impact is inevitable, but when you hear the terrible crunch, the memento pulls you over to the passenger seat instead of the windshield, saving your head, but tearing your abdomen. Your world becomes pain, and it can a squealing metal. Your seatbelt is cutting a line of fire across your chest, and whiplash leaves your head spinning. A metallic taste is slowly filling your mouth and everything hurts. But when the wreckage of your car settles, you are alive. You've won. It's over. You laugh. You laugh and laugh until your lungs hurt, which admittedly isn't very long. You struggle to regain your breath, but it catches it in your throat. Your heart stops. Dead rises in your gut. You're still hearing laughter crackling over the radio. The whisperings has stopped, but the boy is quieter than before, not as Timmy. But definitely still there. Your heart stops when you realize it isn't coming from the radio. He's there. With you. In the car now. Behind you. Your eyes fly in your rearview mirror and are carved by blue. His eyes pin where you sit. You see pain and madness in them. Despite the smile comforting his features, his cheeks are wet with tears. You feel his bony fingers on your face as they reach for your eyes and press down. Your body takes pity on you. You fall unconscious before you feel the pain. It takes six hours for your body to be found. It will be right where you left it, strapped into the wreckage of your car discovered in the wee hours of morning by a well-meaning hunter. The disused rose dawn, which is found at hundreds of miles away from anywhere you had any business being. Your injuries are just as curious. Some are understandable fractured ribs, subsequential internal bleeding, and maybe even maragin in the brain from the crash. Your eyes, however, are gone, inexplicably gouged out of your head, nowhere to be found. Upon inspection, none of your injuries caused your death. Your heart simply stops beating. Your death is a mystery to a police. They treat it as a possible homicide, but ultimately, it gets tossed into a cold case bin. The report does take note of something strange, though. From when you were first discovered, until the lead detective shouts for someone to shut the internal thing off, your GPS is on, caught repeating the same phrase over and over. You have arrived.